Okay, folks, welcome to Market Wrap for June the 13th. All right, before we get into uh, the charts and uh, tomorrow, fresh off of uh, Zero Hedge, we have New York, New York City office occupancy rate hits 50% for the first time since COVID crash. I've been pounding the table on this commercial real estate crisis, which is only getting worse. And everybody's waiting for tomorrow's Federal Reserve rate hike decision, which we already know. We already know what the decision is. It's been priced into the market already. What people aren't talking about is Thursday. Thursday is the weekly non-farm payrolls, which I shared on Thursday night's live stream, that non-farm payrolls are moving up higher. What happens to occupancy rates across the country as layoffs begin to worsen? The Biden administration says we have 3.7% unemployment. What happens when that reverses? Now, in terms of what happens tomorrow, it, we, again, it's already a known. 93% uh, probability the Federal Reserve does nothing. If they move higher, shocker, shocker. And the markets will not like it. Now, moving on to the charts. Uh one big surprise that came out today was the price action of the 10-year yield. Remember, we had a CPI number that came out, which pretty much met expectations. No real great shock. The sticky factor behind some of the inflation is uh, housing, but gasoline prices coming in really helped to knock down the headline CPI number. But what happened? The 10-year yield did a massive bullish key reversal on the day. And it appears as though we're getting ready to break out with equities, in particular tech stocks, that are, are, that are at very, very frothy levels technically and are very, very expensive. And I warn about this, that if we begin to see a forehandle on the 10-year yield, you're going to see many, many of these technology stocks begin to buckle. Why might that be? Borrowing costs are more expensive. As for the TLT, holding support, but just barely. Volume rose today, so bonds down, yields up on the session. The tip market took it on the chin. So what the tip market is telling us, along with gold, silver, we're going to go to those charts in a moment with members. What this chart is telling us, and it's kind of confusing, and you'll, you'll, you'll see the same price action on gold and silver. We'll go over that in a moment with members when we talk about our positions. But what the tip market is telling us is that either A, the markets are concerned about deflation rather than inflation, or B, they're concerned about rising inflation in other areas of the economy that would cause the Federal Reserve to continue down a rate hike path. Now, I'm going to go with the deflation theory first, but I'm going to keep an open mind with regard to inflation down the road. And the reason is this, is that uh, I get access to a CTA report, and what it's telling me is that there's a lot of money beginning to flow into uh, base metals. Agriculture uh, had a very strong week so far. Wood is now being bought up by the machines. So perhaps there's some concern about a resurgence of re inflation down the road. But again, we're going to stick with the deflationary theory for right now. Now, the dollar broke support. But gold, silver, the miners were unable to capitalize on this weak price action. And finally, we got some volume to the downside. So the dollar appears to be in a little bit of trouble. Volatility today, uh, an inside bar, not much happening here. The Dow transports broke out on volume. So it appears as though we're having some sector rotation into the Dow transports. And we called for this a while ago when we called for an expansion of this rally from just the queues out and into the lesser 
quality names, the ARC Fund names, the uh, small cap names, the Dow Jones names as well. Uh, the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has seen a good rally, but we've been rejected at resistance. Volume, a little bit light today. S&P 500, daily view. We broke out, broke out and above resistance. Let's check out the SPX. SPX looking very, very strong. This is a monthly chart right now because what we're doing is we're looking for resistance. And at current, we're trading above 43.25, which marked resistance back in uh, August of last year before the market took another leg down. The question is, with the rally in the equity markets, in anticipation of a pause by the Federal Reserve, does the market get sold off on the news? I think there's a very good chance that that happens. It may not be the knee-jerk reaction, but I think that the machines, which are loaded up with S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures, they may look for an opportunity to sell into any strength. The triple Qs, this could be a the beginning of a blow-off top here today. Uh, could even be the top with a almost shooting star formation. Volume, pretty heavy, pretty strong close. Small caps, we expected a breakout. We got the breakout. They moved up higher one spot, 1.5%, and probably going to continue up higher as the rally begins to broaden out. Now, the banks, they may be a beneficiary of the Federal Reserve's pausing. Why? Well, What's the reason for the regional bank crisis? Well, it's the Federal Reserve ratcheting up interest rates so aggressively, the rate of change the regional banks just couldn't handle. So if the Federal Reserve begins to pause, it may give the banks a reason to rally. So XLF was up on the session on light volume. Let's check out the regional bank ETF. The regional bank ETF did even better. This is going up higher. This is going to move up higher. Regional banks up two spot, three two percent. So, in advance of the Federal Reserve announcement tomorrow, if anything, I'd want to be a buyer of the regional banks. They haven't come too far too fast. I wouldn't want to stay longer than because I think they still have problems down the road, given commercial real estate, which I just, which I just spoke about. But the regional banks are looking pretty good here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll illustrate for you in greater detail what I'm talking about, and it's this. Here you have a nice bull flag setup. That's a continuation pattern. Moving on, technology, filled candlestick, not exactly what you want to see at the top of a trading range. The last time we saw one of these was back here. We pulled back. Is it possible that we pull back again? Yeah, I think it's very possible. Volume strong. Consumer staples broke out today. The machines have been selling staples. They are... Still net short of the staples, but if you see uh, some buying of the consumer staples names, well, then they'll begin to cover those shorts, and you could see a nice rally up in the staples. Now, we, we were long of Target. We bought it yesterday as we saw some strength come in, and we sold it today on a pop-up higher. Target is a consumer staple name. We're not going to bring politics into this, but we did sell it today. Maybe we'll sell puts to try to average down our basis costs and continue to ride the rally in staples using the options market. Consumer discretionary names, I'm dying to short the consumer discretionary names. I want to short them very, very badly. The consumer is being left for dead. Delinquencies on credit card debt are is rising. Student, student loans uh, for, for college tuition, those payments need to resume in the next couple of months. So I'm eyeballing a blow-off top, ideally up to around 173, and then we're going to look to short the consumer staple names. Now, I mentioned earlier that we were seeing some re inflation creep back into agriculture, and this is the DBA Agriculture Fund. And clearly, it is signaling some real serious strength. A very powerful week. Light volume. But still, this is telling us a story. And if we pull back 
and we take a look at the DBA, let's use a monthly chart. Look at the higher low. This is a beautiful chart. This is the value of stepping back, taking a look at your charts from a higher level view, multi-time frame analysis, get your crayon out, play connect the dots, there you go, there's your trend. This could be bought. Stochastics rising, RSI rising, energy, an up day, but fairly weak price action. Let's take a look at oil. Oil was up on the day, pretty strong day, holding support. But man, if we break 65 bucks the barrel, uh, oil's going a lot lower. Now, gold in the session did not benefit from the as expected CPI report. Does this mean that the heyday for gold is over? No, it's probably going to pull back. I have little doubt that it's going to pull back, maybe to 1920 if that fails, maybe down to 1880, but I'd be a buyer. The reason is, is that the government will not stop spending and inflation will only come back. Remember what the Congress just did, the Uniparty, what they just did. They just gave the green light to the administration to spend beyond the $4 trillion authorized. There is no debt ceiling debate until 2025, after the next election. And when you take a look at, let's go to intraday. I need to use GLD for intraday. When you take a look at this chart here, this is a head and shoulder setup, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Uh, if we break 180 on the GLD, we're going a lot lower. Now, if you're not currently a member, you should be, because now we're going to be going into the premium content, which is where we review the closing price action of our positions as well as positions that appear to be under accumulation by the machines case in point healthcare and aluminum so please head on over take advantage of our 14 day free trial offer become a member and see the full version now nugget bearish reversal day lower high on stokes